Jesus name we pray our father we thank you because we have the privilege to know you and to learn your wisdom we thank you because in various ways you speak to restore the backsliders and to bring sinners to you father you have much for us to learn in the message of today. Thank you for it. Thank you for your gift of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm speaking to you on the danger of disobeying God's word as seen in the case of Jonah. The danger of disobeying God's word as seen in the case of Jonah. I want to read from Jonah chapter 1 the Bible tells us now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai saying the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The Lord spoke to him. It could be the Lord sent the message through somebody to him. You know, there are people that are looking for the word of the Lord. They are asking God, speak to me. God, speak to me. And if somebody tells them, ah, the Lord sent me to you, what a joy to them. Because, oh, so God has recognized me in heaven to send a word to me. Some will even say, please, my brother, I know the Lord speaks to you. Take this, my, my request. Take it to God in prayer. And whatever he tells you, let me know. There are people who desire to hear the word of the Lord. But I want you to note something. You who desire to hear the word of God, know that it is not always sweet. That the word of God is not always delightsome. That there are times, many times, the word comes so strong. Comes to you demanding sacrifice. Demanding obedience. Coming with instructions. The word of God had come like that to Abraham. Saying, take your son, your only son, and go and sacrifice it unto me. There were some people that contacted Jeremiah the prophet and said, go and pray to God for us. We want to know the mind of God. We want to know the mind of God. Come and tell us. What is God saying that we may do after some days of prayer? Jeremiah came to them and spoke to them the word of the Lord. They refused. So no. That's not how in fact God didn't speak to you. <laughs> he said no. God didn't speak to you. Our enemy when I met with you. And 
talk to you and you listen to the voice of the enemy and you're coming to tell us that it's God who spoke to you, we will never hear that one. That's it. Your mind is for the word of God, but you're only thinking of favorable part of the word of God. You're only thinking of promises. You're only thinking that God will say, I will bless you. I will do this. That thing you're looking for, you will find it. I give you three days. You're going to find that thing. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to do that. That's your desire. You're only looking for the 50% of God's world, not the fool. But see Jonah here. The word of God came to him. It was too hard for him. Jonah did not like it. What did he do then? The Bible tells us in verse 2. What did the word say? The word say, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. Jonah didn't like this word of God. You know, there are people that when the word of God comes to them, the teaching of the word comes to them, and it is not in the palatable sight of their lives. They say they don't want. They will even leave that place and say, that preacher doesn't speak good things. Ahab, is there no other prophet? That can speak beside these 400 prophets. He said there is one. Micaiah by name. But he does not speak good things. Concerning me. He does not speak good things. So. The word of God. That has come to, J uh, to uh, Jonah here. Was not the type he wants. Why? They, he understood the word. The word was not going to serve his interest. God was sending him to Nineveh. And this Nineveh dealt with the children of Israel. They attacked the children of Israel. They did many evil things in the world. And he knew that as the Lord is sending him to Nineveh now, the Lord is sending, the go and speak against it. If Nineveh repents, the Lord will not judge them. While he, Jonah, wanted Nineveh to be judged, and exterminated. He wanted Nineveh to be judged. And be destroyed completely. No mercy. He didn't want Nineveh to be given a chance of repentance. So he was running away. So what did Jonah do? Verse 3. But Jonah rushed up. To flee. Unto Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. And went down. To Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fear thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Man. All, you want God to serve your interests? You want God to do good? God, I want you to do it in the way I want. Is he your God again? Is he your leader again? You only want sweet, sweet, sweet. Only sweet, sweet, sweet. You're not ready for the strong word of God. You're running away from it. Just as you people are saying, many women don't want to hear the word talking about their dressing. They don't want. They want prophecy telling them, you are barren. The Lord says you are going to have a Twins. That's what they, they, they want to hear. Oh, you want to marry? The Lord says, before this year is over, you have gotten a, a husband. Uh -huh. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for. The Lord says, your dressing is ungodly. The Lord says, that earring, remove it. The Lord says, go and do restitution. The Lord says, go and tell your husband that thing. The Lord says, tell your wife what you have done. The Lord says, Tell your wife the money you have kept. The Lord said, ah, 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 that one they don't want. It's too hard for them. In fact, there were people that left Jesus and followed no more with him. And Jesus is the word of God. Why? Because this is a hard saying. Who can take it? I'm telling you, brother. I'm telling you, sister. If you want the full blessings of God, be ready for the word of God. Sweet or bitter. Simple or hard. That's the 
balance for you have two eyes that give you the balance of sight. You have two ears that give you the balance of hearing. Completeness of hearing. Two ears. Two nostrils for breathing. Two hands that you can swing well and the body can be in the center and you can go to where you're going. Two legs that you can move and go as far as possible. Therefore, God is giving you the balance of the world. Be ready to take the hard one as you take joyfully the simple ones. Take it. Don't run away. Jonah ran away now. Running from the presence of God. The Bible says, whither shall you run from the presence of God? From Where shall we run from your presence? Which direction do you follow actually? To run from the presence of God. Are you going to climb up to the sky? The Lord is there. Are you going to descend into the sea? The Lord is there. Are you going to cover yourself with darkness? The darkness shall be light unto God. Why are you refusing? You're just troubling yourself. Because there's no solution anymore. There's no other way. There's no other thing for you to have peace. For you to have rest. There's no way but to obey that world. Otherwise there's no hope anywhere. Then why are you delaying? Why are you delaying? I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. God is happy, very happy with those that obey him speedily. Great peace of day that love thy law. So God wants you to obey him speedily. Those that tremble at his word, even if it is difficult, ask him for grace. Ask him for help. Otherwise, where are you going? When the people went away, Jesus asked his disciples, are you not also going away? Peter answered, to whom shall we go? For we know that thou art the Christ and that thou hast the ways of eternal life. These ways are eternal life. Jonah, do you want to go to heaven? Then why are you running away from the commandments of heaven? From the voice of heaven? From the God of heaven? Why are you running away? Please, don't shiver and think to run away from God's word. Restitution. Don't run away from it. Don't run away from the word of God. On Christian dressing. Don't run away from it. It's the word of eternal life. Run to it. Ask for grace. He will help you to do it. But Jonah ran away. He went, he, he went in the opposite direction. He never wanted to go to Nineveh. That showed the state of the heart. The heart of Jonah at that time was an angry heart. Malicious heart. That's why he did not wish anything good for, for Nineveh. Never. They must die. Not, he, he did not wish that God should show Nineveh any kind of mercy. No, I will not do it. Don't have that type of heart. Leave God alone to do good to your brother. Let God alone to show mercy to your sister. Let God alone. If he will pass through you, let him pass through you. He can also pass through another person for you. So, that's what happened. Jonah now had gone into the boat, into the ship, to go off. He was going to Tarshish. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Who sent the mighty wind into the sea? Who sent the mighty wind into the sea? It was God. The Lord sent it into the sea because of Jonah. That wind came into the sea for Jonah. And it came as a judgment from the Lord. Judgment from the Lord. This judgment problem is coming from God and not from Satan. 
Because you accord everything to Satan. You accord all difficulties that come to your way to Satan. Satan, Satan, Satan. Satan, even God, what the things done by God, you give it to Satan. Was it Satan that sent the wind to the sea? No. In case you say back to Satan. Their people are so fast. With somebody, something comes to their life, back to sender. Oh God, back to sender. Do you know the sender? You want to add seed to sin? God is the sender. God is the sender. And you're saying that thing should go back to God. Oh, you're in contest with God indeed. Don't be fast in praying that type of prayer. In fact, don't pray that type of prayer. It's God that sent this one against your family. It is God that sent this one against your life. It is God that sent this one against your business. Because there is a case between you. There is a controversy. There is a controversy between you and God. There is stubbornness. There is rebellion. You are going to the opposite side. That's why God has sent this to you. Judgment. You know, many ministers pray for people without investigating them. Somebody will come and say, hey, it is doing me like this. In fact, I cannot sleep in the night. No examination. So, oh God, we buy. What are you buying there actually? God sent it. Have you examined that person? Have you known the type of life she lives? Do you know how she resisted God, battled against God, and God allowed that thing to come into the life? God is all good. There's no judgment with him. God doesn't have judgment. God doesn't grow angry. God is not annoyed at any time. Check up yourself. There's something that is in there in your prayers. Check up yourself. There's something that has blocked your way. And that thing, in this respect, because of your life, is from God. Is from God. Because you are stubborn. So let the ministers also be asking God, this man, this woman, tell me, Lord, else I waste days of fasting. So we were going to fasting. We're going to go into 21 days fasting. We're going to go into three days dry fasting. You will be wasting energy and no result shall come forth. Wow! Jonah was running away from the presence of God. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Can you see that? The sea was like to be broken. It had the problem actually. Unfortunately, this problem affected other people. Look at it in verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wires and cast forth the wires that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. I want you to know about this. The ship that carried Paul to Rome had how many passengers? 270. One man was bringing a problem to 270 people. Your lack of repentance is causing trouble to many other people. To members of your family. To your neighbors. To the people you come in close association with. You are refusing to repent the damage you have done for this number of years that you refuse to repent. If the Lord calculates it for you, you will say terrible. You will know what it means by delaying in sin for one day. See what happened to these people. 
great number of people in the ship. Trouble came to them. And they were casting their goods. They went to buy things. They were, many were traders. They went to buy materials. And they had to throw them into the sea. To lighten the ship. The ship because of one sinner that is among them. Surely the Bible says. One sinner destroys, destroys much good. One sinner. One sinner for refusing to confess that sin in the family. Many good things have been stayed. Many good things have been stayed. That's why the Bible said, I met haste. Because I don't want to block the, the way to my family. I don't want to block the way of God. For refusing to con confess your sin. And you preacher, for refusing to confess that sin, you fell into much good has been stayed against your, your congregation. In fact, to some of these people, the congregation suffer some darkness. So, you can see it. You refuse to confess the sin. Satan has taken over your government and this odor that comes from you is dirty. You are now a living. You are living in the whole room. Staying there without sin, confess. How will God be hearing your prayers? How will the work be going on? How will righteousness be spread to the people? No. The little light that is there will be quenching. Will be quenching. Will be quenching. Until it finishes. Wow. You are stubborn. And it's not that you are not aware. You are aware. Jonah didn't know. I said Jonah didn't know. It's not an ignorant. Not that he didn't know. He knew. Not that he didn't know the mind of God. He knew. Not that you don't know the mind of God. You know. See people now. That are suffering. The man is sleeping under there. Where people are crying, oh, 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 he's sleeping there. Some of them, some of these evildoers will take drugs so that their mind will not be touched. They will not even understand what is going on. Nothing will bother them. That drug will finish. What I am telling you, you are delaying your salvation. You are delaying. Why do you want to contest with the Almighty God? You don't know him. You don't know his word, you knew it. And others have to suffer now. And others are suffering now. What did they do to you? There are people who wanted to pay their children's school fees, they went into business. There are people who want to build a house, they went into business. There are people who want to do this and do that, and they went into build. Some even want to pay their debts, and they went into business. And because of you, there's a sh their goods have been cast into the water. Business collapse. Jonah, where is he sitting? Is Jonah sitting near you? Tell him what he's doing is no good. So, now, verse 6. So, the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise! Call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. When everybody was crying, everybody was crying to his God. When everybody was crying, the man went down to see John asleep. He said, what, what, what do you mean by that? Come, what do you mean by that? You're not aware of what is going on here? I took drugs. Rise up from there and begin to pray to your God. Amen. Amen. So what, what I'm saying is that some people take drugs. Of Jonah on, of course, not drugs. But wake up there and pray to your God. We're in danger. You know, God knows how to handle human beings. That's why don't always be praying that all problems should go away. If all problems go away, you have no challenge in this life. You won't enter heaven. Because it is in time of trouble that many people are wake to their God. Awake to reality of God and look for Him. The torchlight is lying down there. As long as there is the sunlight, there's electricity, don't bother about the torchlight. It is when Nipper takes light. Then you'll be doing like this. Where, 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 where? <laughs> you'll be looking for the torch now. Many people, it's only when trouble comes their way. If God
God cannot get you in the place of peace, he will bring trouble to your life. Check it. Is that not the reason of many troubles in your life? Because God cannot get you in the place of peace. Is that not the reason why one trouble comes? Are those troubles not messengers of God sent to call you? Sent to tell you that repent and settle your scores with God. Check it out. Let's not be too fast. I've said Satan, 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 Satan. No. God is involved too. God is involved in such matters. God is a judge. He's greater than Satan in judgment. Check it out. And even in his mercy, he sends out judgment. In judgment, remember mercy. He sends out such judgment because he wants you to awake and enjoy mercy. So check up your life. Check up your life. Now, we go forward to see how things are. But when people were praying, you know this man told Jonah, rise up and pray to your God. It's not to our God because they serve different gods. The human beings serve different gods. They have confidence in many things. There were people in that ship that were checking where their charm was. So we we'll raise it up. Those who have, um, what is this, this thing called? Uh, aprons. We'll carry aprons and be doing like this. <laughs> They'll carry up aprons and put on their back and turn their back like this. Whether apron can save them at that time. Those who are of, uh, uh, for, of these uh, people will be saying, uh, what, are they, what would they be saying? They'll be saying many things. But you have a God. Jonah had a God. All these other gods could do nothing. In times of difficulty, when the D day comes, the evil day, charms will have no power. Gods will have no power. Idols. All this fake religion, you shall know them on that day. It is then you will know only those who serve the living God are those that shall be strong and shall do exploits. It's then you will know that there's a difference between you and those that serve other people, serve other things. So, Jonah, rise up. Call upon your God. Now, there's a lesson here you need to learn. All that was happening in that sheep was happening because of who? Because Jonah had problem with who? There are people that have problem with some witches and wizards. And they pursue them into vehicle. You may be a passenger in that vehicle. There are people that have problem with occultic people group somewhere. They have pursued them and they have run. They are inside that vehicle. The vehicle you join, you are boarding to go to Abuja, to go to Lagos or whatever. They have also entered into that flight that you are taking to go to America and the people don't mind attacking the whole vehicle for one man. Therefore, pray at all times. Mean ought always to pray and not to fend. When you enter a vehicle, pray. When you board a flight, pray. Because you don't know some battles that are going on between one man there. You're out of the flight that the aeroplane that caught fire in the sky. Is that so? It was going to Sokoto, is that? So many years ago. It might be just one man there that they were looking for. Other innocent souls perished. Other innocent souls. What if there was a man, a child of God there? If he had gone before his God and prayed, bind every force there, they would go safely. For my sake, O oh Lord, spare the sheep. For my sake, I am here, O oh Lord, fulfill your promise. Therefore, pray. Men ought always to pray that you, the righteous perish not with the wicked. 
That's what the Lord is telling us. Because there was a targeted man there. Pray. Now verse 6. Verse 7 now. And they said everyone to his fellow. Come. And let us cast lots. That we may know for whose cause. This evil is upon us. So they cast lots. And the lot fell upon Jonah. Come. These people can think the curse costless does not come. Was that the first time they had been driving the ship? No. Where is it happening? Where are things going like this? Where am I finding things like this? An enemy has done this. Something is wrong somewhere. The people were wise enough to investigate. Something is wrong. I suppose that somebody is in this ship. Either is an occultic man sent by the devil to destroy us or some higher powers because of him are attacking us. The problem is not with the ship because our ship, we service it before we talk about our journey. And it's not that it is not moving, it's moving. It's opposing the wind in the sea. So, something is wrong. Please, let's check up. Let's check up. Hmm. We were in a service somewhere and a particular brother was ministering. As he was preaching, he stopped and said, stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Then, he continues his preaching. As he preached again, he said, please, I say you should stop what you're doing. As he continued preaching, he said, okay, now everybody, we will trace out somebody here. Let's, begin, let's go into prayer. And as he was, we were praying, the blood of Jesus, name of Jesus, a man became inconvenient where he was. The man showed forth. An occultic man. Study yourself. Check her. Let the church check her. When confusion is among you, check her. The devil might have sponsored somebody there. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Make sure, check up. If the members of the church are feeling a particular sickness constantly, check up. Who has come in there? Let's be checking up among the children teachers that teach the children. Let's check up among those who cook our food for us. Don't bring careless persons there. They must be well examined. Well checked up. People with good reputation. These electronic people, who is sitting there by you? Did you know him before? You check up very well. Who is doing this? Who is connecting this? Where did you find him? Do you, do you, does he have a good record? Or you just pick up anybody anyhow? Then you tell me that, hey, we were doing the recording. Uh, this message spoiled. We were doing the recording. This one spoiled. It's because you are careless. These people were not careless. Let's find out where are things like this. Where is not the church growing? Where are we finding fighting, struggle, this? Have you not come to your senses enough to say, the devil has done this. Let's rise up and look at it. Let's rise up and get the personality that is causing this trouble now. Because something, we were living on, we were living peacefully. We were, we were peaceful, we were loving, we were doing all things. We were, what's happening? This one is not talking with this, this one is not talking with this, this one is not talking with pastor, it's in trouble, everybody. Something has happened. An enemy has come. Check it out with prayer. Investigate. Check up those people you have given them function. Who has suddenly come and has taken over position? Check up all those things. This means, say, let's cast lots. And as they did that, God in heaven directed them. The Lord will direct you. Amen. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. This man did it. And he got it. 
the Lord showed them it was Jonah. But now see this man. It was Jonah that caused that trouble. Yes. It was Jonah that caused that problem. In verse 8, Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? Whence cometh thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? These are unbelievers, but they could control their emotions. They were able to ask questions very peacefully. Um, it's like the white man's police. The white man's police is putting an, is, is putting chain upon your hands and say, hey, co -co -pred. <laughs> hey, co -pred. yes, co -pred. It's putting chain upon your hand. Uh, it's arresting you to take you to, to, to prison. And it's laughing with you. Hey, go pray. Hey, go pray. And it's touching your head, rubbing your back. Go pray. Deal peacefully with a person. Deal gently because you might find solution. Yo, you have caught a witch. The witch can be delivered. You have caught a witch, a wizard. Maybe the person causing the trouble, a child in your staying with you in the home, is the reason why things are crumbling in that home. And as you prayed, there was a revelation. And you get the person. You are gentle in asking questions. They spoke peacefully. They never blew the Jonah. Spoke peacefully. Is there a way they can find solution to the matter? Is there any way they can help this matter? Is there any way they can deliver him? Okay, who is he? Where is he from? What has been the problem actually? That is now the reason why the ship cannot move. Is there any way they can solve it? Love people. Don't wish they are dead. Don't wish evil on them. Wish them good. If, they, if evil is meant for them, it will surely come on them. With all your meaning good for them. Then, Verse 9. <clears throat> and he said unto them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Where hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Jonah told the people, I am an Hebrew. I serve the living God. The God that created the heavens and the seas and all things. And he gave me a word and I didn't want it. I didn't want to obey him. That's why I was running to the opposite direction. The people were so afraid. The, the one they serve is idols. You mean, why did you do this? You are God the creator. How could you be so stubborn? God the creator sent you and you refused to deliver his message. God the creator gave you prophetic revelation and you say, no, 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 no. I can't deliver. God, where, who, come. Where? 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 How? Why did you do this? To God? That's the question. Why could you still be sitting down when the matter involved the God of heaven? The creator himself. How could you still be so stubborn when this issue involves the God of heaven? And you know it so clearly. You want to battle with God? You want to delay again in the presence of God? That you can be dropped into hell and no none can redeem you. Man, why are you so stubborn? Wow! The people wonder. You know, it means there are people that can, can contend with God. In their own sin, it is God they can do. 
It is the church of the living God that you want to come and mar. You want to come and confuse. You want to come and destroy the church of God. The children of God. That you want to come and spoil. Ma, come. What happened to your senses? Is these sisters that are giving this testimony so zealous, joyful, how the Lord saved them, how the Lord delivered that, that you want to come and pollute and sleep and sleep with them. It is these sisters that God saved. That Jesus saved with his own precious blood that you are pursuing after to sleep with them and condemn their faith. Kai, ma, be careful that was your day is coming. Be careful. It is a fervent brother. Very fervent in Christ. And you know you are a fake person. It's the one you're passing through to ensure he marries you. What is happening to these people? You don't fear God? How will you escape the judgment of God? The people wondered at Jonah. Why have, what have you done this? Why have you done this? Why? God. That is what I'm saying. That is what the Lord is saying. That's what the scripture is saying. Scripture is revealing man. The people wonder. Then verse 11. These people wonder at the character of some people. Dealing with God, they are not afraid. But there's something I want you to mark here. Jonah was not a liar. He told the truth as it was. Is that so? That was his wisdom. Because truth attracts mercy. That was his wisdom. If you came to if you come to see that Jonah got saved, it was because he told the truth about himself. He confessed the thing as it is about his own life. He confessed his error because the Bible says, he that hideth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. Mercy and truth have met each other. When truth rises up, mercy will answer. Go and tell your husband the truth and see, you will find mercy. Go and tell the, your uh, officer the truth. You will find mercy. Go and tell the church the truth. You will find mercy. Go and tell the pastor the truth. You will find mercy. Go and tell your parents the truth. You will find mercy. Because truth attracts mercy. This truth Jonah spoke was what saved him. Now, see the effect of the truth in the lives of this man. Look at what Jonah told them. In verse 12. Now verse 11 rather. See verse 11. Then said they unto him. What shall we do unto thee. That the sea may be calm unto us. For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. What do we do? See Jonah's answer. And he said unto them. Take me up. And cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto thee. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Thank God for this spirit of Jonah. That's why the Bible says, they that are of a contrite spirit, I will not ignore. Here is the one that was ready to die, that others may be saved. And that is redemptive principle. Let one man die that the whole people perish not. Redemption principle. The law of redemption. And Jonah was ready to die as Jesus was. So that the people, 270, whatever number, should never perish. If it were you, would you take up that? 
Will you not be playing cynic business and hide it up here, hide it up here? Me, I, I, I'm not the one. No. I'm not the one. In fact, I, I, I don't know anything. I, I don't know. The glory of Jonah would have perished forever. The book of Jonah might not have appeared in the scripture. He told the truth. And was ready to suffer the consequence. Why are you not ready to suffer discipline because of your evil life? Then it shows how treacherous a man indeed you are. How treacherous a woman indeed you are that will not be ready to tell the truth and face the consequence. Not minding what is the consequence on your life. You are hiding your sin and you will never prosper. You have locked the door of prosperity against your life. You have locked that door. Jonah was ready to die. Paul said, if I've done anything worthy of death, I refuse, I refuse not to die. Why are you refusing judgment? Why are you hiding your own? Why are you hiding the facts? Hey, they will remove me. You are not a serious man. You are not a good man. The Lord will still remove you. The Lord will still do it because truth is not in your mouth. You will escape them, but you won't escape over there. Be frank. Be open. Give yourself for judgment. You will discover that Jesus will take over. Take away that judgment upon himself. And you will be free. Deny yourself that you don't need Jesus. You will face that judgment. Indeed. When you deny the judgment, the truth. Then Jonah told them the truth. Cast me into the sea. I know that I am the cause of this matter. Because of the frankness of this man. Because of the truth this man spoke. Now, I want you to see the mercy these people wanted to show him. The mercy. Look at it. In verse 13. Nevertheless, let's read verse 13 together. One, two, go. Nevertheless, the men wrought hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. For the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. These men, because they would show mercy to Jonah, decided that, okay, we will not continue our journey. Let's struggle to save this man. Instead of casting this man to the sea, let's turn another direction now and go to the land and drop him there. But it never worked. Why were they showing him mercy? It's because he told them the truth. He played peacefully. His words were truthful. And he had a broken heart. He realized his fault. Then human beings would show him mercy. It's as much as it was in their power. But it's only that it was beyond their power. It was beyond their power. Don't be trusting on man. When it comes to matter of God. For no man can deliver you from the hand of God. No man. Money cannot. Your charm cannot. Witchcraft will not be able. Queen of the coast will not be able. Grandmaster shall never walk. When the day of the Lord comes to handle the Satan, the wisdom of man will fail. Then is the help of man. You are dealing with God. Yes. Check out. If that person is in rebellion against God, any help you want to render to him is the help that will make him settle with God. It's not the help that will make him escape and still remain in disobedience. Make sure you don't do that. You'll be wasting effort and wasting money. Then, it became so clear that these men must but cast Jonah into the sea. Nothing again. But these men, these are natural men. And the Bible says, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you can in no wise enter into the kingdom. See natural men bringing up 
exercising the powers of moral. They are not saved men. They can still show for this kindness. They have the fear of God to this to this level. How much more you that profess that you are a minister of the gospel, that profess that you are a man of God, a woman of God, a child of God, a daughter of God. How much more you? Much is demanded from you. See it in verse 14. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's sin, for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blow. For thou, O oh Lord, hast done as it has pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her region. That was the answer. That was the will of God. But before this man did this, because all the investigation, they had investigated it. The investigation shot so, so that this, this man offended his God. But how to cast Jonah into the sea? They did all to avoid it. Now it has been below their power. Now they must do as they had, as has been said. But what if Jonah is innocent? What if this wind is not from Jonah? Now they're going to do this. An innocent blood may have to be upon them. Oh Lord, God that is in heaven, you know that it is not because we want to destroy this man's life. You know that it is, how could we do this? Please, now that we have to do it, have mercy upon us. Know that it's not by wickedness, for we know the danger of blood. We know. You don't know the danger of abortion, but these people know. Because blood is spilled. You don't know the danger of killing a man, but these people know. These ones, they know. That God cannot spear you when blood is shed by you. The blood of Abel, your brother, cried up to me in heaven. That's what they had to plead. You are so careless to speak against people. So careless to take action against people. So careless to take action against your wife. Drive your wife and give her blow. Hey. So careless. You can't I go and poison that person. And you're, all, you're looking for how to go and poison a person? You don't know what it means by the blood of a man upon your head. These people knew. These people knew. They cried. They pleaded. But one thing is to show that God was in the matter. They dropped Jonah into the sea. They pitied Jonah because fish will carry him. Anything can happen. Into the midst of the sea, there is no swimmer that can escape. They knew it. That's why they never wanted to do it. Why are you so fast to inju in injuring your brother? You are so fast to do evil against your brother? So fast to do evil against your wife? You even close your eyes when you are slapping her. Hi, wicked man. And your children too. Some will bring fire, bring some fire out and throw at their child. Hey, man, man, man. Change, change. Verse 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. And offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and, and made vows. What vow, but that to, uh, we will worship the living God? We have discovered Him. We are now going to worship the living God. We have discovered Him. We have discovered Him. Who can do after this? God has manifested Himself. We saw it. The fear 
They sacrificed to the living God and made vows. Do you see what restitution can do? How restitution glorifies God. How restitution can bring people to Christ. Make people to, to fear the Lord. Great men. Hardened sinners. Nominal Christians. Religious people. How it can arrest them for Jesus. And open their eyes. And make them pledge to serve the Lord. Restitution. Jonah did it. See how it has affected people. Go and do that restitution. How you, you will glorify God. How you will bless the heart of God. How you will promote the name of God in human society. You will increase worshippers of Jehovah. You will increase believers of Jesus upon the earth. Now, men have finished their mercy. All they would do failed. But Jonah kindled something that steered the spirit of mercy both in man and in God. Telling the truth. Contrite spirits I will no wise ignore. Speak the truth and it shall make you free. Now, the divine God who has come into mercy because Jonah had made confession. Jonah has spoken the truth. Jonah's spirit had been broken. Jonah accepted judgment because he had sinned. God will show mercy to Jonah. Do it. You will receive mercy from God. Acts of mercy started. In verse 17. Let's read it together. One, two, go. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Give a clap offering to the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. It may be immediately they cast Jonah into the sea. The great fish just came up, opened the mouth. They say, this man is gone. Means so that it is gone, but he is not gone. What you are seeing that looks contrary is actually the act of mercy. Do you know where that fish is taking Jonah to? <laughs> there's a great God in heaven. I said there's a great God in heaven. God prepared the fish. God instructed the fish. Because Jonah made confession of his sins. Jonah owned up to his sins. The heart of Jonah was broken. And Jonah accepted judgment. The Lord will take over that judgment. Amen. He that hideth his sins shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh shall find mercy. Now in chapter 2 verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. The Lord knows how to clean sin from people. Go and settle that inside the fish. Jonah, go and settle yourself inside the fish. He began to pray there. Hey. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. This is good to the God of heaven. It is to his praise. God must be praised in his act 
of mercy over sinners. Jonah said out of the belly of the fish, he called the belly of the fish hell because it heat has to come up to melt every living thing that the fish has swallowed. The type of heat, bonding heat to melt Jonah was the heat of hell. Jonah began to cry by reason of his affliction. He cried unto the Lord from the fish's belly in his torments and torture. He remembered to cry to God and God heard him. For, yea, God had heard my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas and the floods compassed me about all thy billows and their waves passed over me then i say i am cast out of thy side yet i will look again toward thy holy temple Remember this, please, 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 don't forget this one. Remember, remember it. Because God is a God of mercy. God is a God that keeps a covenant. God is a God of forgiveness. He is our Savior. Solomon had, made, had built a temple. And in praying to dedicate the temple, he said, Oh God, whenever any Israelite or the whole nation sinned, and you deported them anywhere and they prayed unto you facing Jerusalem facing this temple thou shalt hear them from heaven and forgive them their sins Jonah in the fish's belly was facing the temple in the fish's belly how did he design the direction of Jerusalem how did he do? But it not that the remaining strength and face the temple of God in Jerusalem. Not that the remaining strength of your life and grab that name Jesus. Exercise your faith upon him. Maybe in your dying moment, if you see anybody in a dying moment, let him mutter the remaining strength and grab Jesus and put his faith on Jesus and embrace Jesus. Salvation will come. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall be saved. Use the remaining strength you have and work out your salvation. Use the remaining strength you have. Yes. I went down. I went down to the bottoms of these mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. Oh Lord, my God. The world swallowed him out. Went down the bottom of the sea. And rested there. Normally when they have eaten a big thing like this. They go and rest. It will take them days. They won't be going up again. Let digestion took place. They carried Jonah down. It carried Jonah down the bottom of the sea. And rested there. Jonah said the matter is over forever. I'm gone. God saved me. Where did the secret society people carry you to? God will save you. Amen. Yes. Verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. My soul fainted within me. I remembered the Lord. 
Things were getting away. I was going to my last end. I remembered the Lord. I still mutter prayer. And my prayer came to God. With a biting stomach ache. Taking away my energy, I still mutter prayers. And my prayer came to God. Pray, I will hear you. That's what the Lord says. I know the thoughts I have for you. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you the expected end. But go and pray, I will hear you. Seek me and you will find me. Then, when Jonah saw how the Lord brought salvation to him, there's something Jonah said. Let's read it together, verse 8. One, two, go. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Do you understand that? What if he had told lies? Before those people, this mercy, he would have not got it. He would have told lies because, hey, tell lies, you can save yourself. You can save. If, if all of us will perish, will perish together, we get hard. He told the truth. <clears throat> Even the truth that would kill him. But he obtained mercy. Tell the truth to your husband, to your wife, to your neighbor to your leader, you will obtain mercy. Because mercy and truth have met each other. Mercy will come from God. Even if man cannot give it, God will give it. They that observe lying vanities is vanity because it, the truth will eventually be discovered. You're just wasting your time. Bury the truth after three days it shall arise. A lying tongue is but for a moment. Yes. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed Salvation is of the Lord. When the, Jonah was in the belly of the fish, he told God, if you bring me up from here, beyond Nineveh we will be going. Beyond Nineveh I will go. <laughs> he, he made a vow. He made a promise. He will sacrifice unto God with the sacrifice of thanksgiving. For God has done it. I'm convinced in my heart that there will be people here now that will be saved by God. Amen. Miracle will take place in your life. Amen. Salvation will take place in your life. Amen. That beyond your hope will happen. As long as you will confess your life out. Confess your sins out. Tell God how it is. Open up. Salvation will take over. Amen. Mercy of God will come. Amen. Then we want to read the last verse. Verse 10. Are you there? Yes. Let everybody be there. Verse 10. <laughs> this God. We need to go and sit under his feet. And just be watching him. And be smiling. And be touching him. And... <laughs> Now verse 10, 1, 2, go. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomit out Jonathan upon dry land. Towards Nineveh. <laughs> Simple. You say whatever has hindered you, the Lord will speak to that thing. What force has kept you bound? The Lord will speak to that force. 
Once society or secret group has bound you, the Lord will speak to that secret group. And they will vomit you out of that place. They will vomit you out of that place. Whatever has kept you bound, that thing will vomit you out right now. Rise up upon your feet and go before the Lord in prayer. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. The Lord shall cause it happen. He will speak. The Lord will speak. Hey, go to power. Go to power. He will speak. And you shall be vomited out. Whatever sin has seen that you captive, the Lord shall cause it, cause that sin to be vomited out of your life. You're coming out of that sin. Yes. upon God confess your sins to him that yoke shall be broken that yoke shall be broken you are coming out of it speak the truth mercy will meet with you Mercy will meet with you. The truth you speak shall make shall meet with mercy. Confess, confess, confess. For he that confesseth his sins and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Forsake your sin.
Jesus name we pray Father show me mercy show me mercy show me mercy show me Father show me mercy Jesus show me mercy Father show me mercy Jesus show me mercy Father show me mercy Deliver my soul Jesus show me mercy Jesus show me mercy I want to have mercy I want to have mercy Jesus show me mercy show me mercy oh Lord my God Jesus show me mercy Father show me mercy I want to have mercy I want to have mercy I want to have mercy Jesus show me mercy Father show me mercy show me show me mercy I want to have mercy show me mercy oh Lord my God Jesus show me mercy Holy Ghost show me mercy Jesus show me mercy show me mercy oh Lord my God Jesus show me mercy I want to have mercy Father show me mercy show me mercy oh Lord my God go before the Lord and ask for mercy tell the truth to him Tell the truth about your life. Reveal the case to him. Say it the way it is. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. name we pray yes I told you that God will serve people here because you have confessed your heart there are people here that have confessed all the, their heart to God when, when Samson confessed where his power lies Delilah said he has confessed all his heart Delilah knew now God has known that you have made genuine confession. It is mercy you want now. Just move forward here. Just move forward. God has known that you have made genuine confession. It is mercy now that you need. It is mercy now that you need. It's mercy. God has known. Delilah said, oh, he has told me all his heart. He has told me all his heart. Now, you who cannot come in here, just stand there. He has told me all his heart. It is mercy now. If you don't lie, you will forsake your mercy. I just begin to plead the blood of Jesus now. I am pleading the blood of Jesus now. I am pleading the blood of Jesus now. I am pleading the blood of the cross 
May Jesus take over the judgment over your life. Let Jesus take over your judgment. Let him carry that judgment upon himself. May the Lord Jesus save your life completely. Let Jesus sacrifice be for your sake. Let the death of Jesus be for your sake. Let the penalty Jesus suffered. Let it cover your life. Let it cover your life. Let it cover your life. Let Jesus take over your sin. Let him bear your iniquity. Let Jesus bear your punishment. Let him bear your judgment. Let mercy show. Mercy from God. Mercy from God. Mercy from God. Mercy from God. Let Jesus show you mercy. Let Jesus show you mercy. He hey, mercy from God. Let the Father, the Father of mercies, the Father of mercies, oh Lord, show mercy to your people. Show mercy for your people. Forgive iniquity. Lord, forgive iniquity. You forgive Jonah. You forgive Jonah. Oh Lord, forgive these people. Forgive their sins. Forgive their sins. Change their lives. Change their lives. Give them a new, a new life. A new spirit. Purge their spirit. Wash their spirit. Sanctify them, Lord. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Let God change you. Let God forgive you. Receive forgiveness from God. Receive forgiveness from God. Receive forgiveness from God. Come back from the fish belly. Get out from the place of judgment. Come back from the fish belly. Let God vomit you out. Let that fish vomit you out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke the wicked heart. I say come out from her. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, strengthen their hearts. My God, wash their lives. My God, sanctify their hearts. They will not do it anymore. Jonah will go and offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. Jonah will go and pay his vow. Jonah will go and pay his vow. They vow to serve the Lord. They vow to do the will of the Lord. They vow to stand on truth. They vow to preach the word. Jonah shall go and perform the will of God. The grace of God be with you. A new life has been given to you. Jesus found that man and said, See, ye have, ye have been met all. Sin no more. Sin no more. Sin no more. You have been cleansed. You have been cleansed. Almighty, we are grateful to you. This is mercy. Your children confess all. And you show it. And you drop down mercy. Mercy is touching them now. Mercy is touching them now. Mercy is touching them now. And now they shall be clean. Now they have been made clean. Now they will serve you. Without spot or wrinkle. Amen. With total commitment. Amen. The fish has vomited Jonah to, towards Nineveh. Amen. Jonah now that will enter the not Jonah will walk into Nineveh now. Amen. He doesn't need to enter into any ship again. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I say. Oh Lord, Holy Ghost. Holy
for the last time. for your people. Jesus appear for your people. Jesus appear for your people. In Jesus name. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, Contact us on zero eight one three six three five six eight one three and zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three. You can also reach us through our email address holiness revival movement at gmail dot com. God bless you.